Now before I get into this review, I mentioned at the end of my review of Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon that the next review will be much better than last time when I was in Ren's Hell. Well, that's exactly what this is, but only a bit. Anyways, it's time that we check out Lucasfilm's animation. We're not going to talk about the Star Wars animated series like the 2003 or 2008 series of the Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels or even the 2008 Clone Wars movie, but instead we're going into one of those films that even George Lucas himself doesn't even want to talk about. And that film I'm referring to is Strange Magic. Now, of course, you may be wondering, where did this thing come from and why didn't it get promoted that often? Well, for one thing, the film was announced two months before it got released in 2015, which is very impossible for your average anime film to get announced that late, plus the fact that it was only released on DVD in terms of home media, and the people at Disney were vocal on how they were so unsatisfied with this film that they had to release it under the Touchstone Pictures banner, where they would usually release their adult films, as well as others like Who Framed Roger Rabbit and The Nightmare Before Christmas before Disney came in to distribute the latter for its re-release in 3D. But does this film have the same magic that you would find in some of their animated classics? Or will this be as bad as Disney thought it was? First off, the story. What's very easy to notice is that the story is all about one thing, which is in two words. True love. The things we have to know about true love are what it is, its trials and tribulations, where to find it, how we know that one person we found is the right one, and so many questions that have been answered by millions around the world that just make you want to get right out of that seat and shout out, I can't take it anymore! This film tries desperately hard to force this love notion in a way that is very atrocious, where it looks at every stereotypical trope imaginable, making it extremely easy to know what will happen from beginning to end. But do you want to know what is worse than a predictable plot? A predictable plot that wants to drag on so that it feels like it's taking a lot longer than you can ever imagine. And what is it used in an attempt to extend the film? Musical numbers, of course, because if you don't know, Lucas made this film a musical. A jukebox kind of musical. But I won't talk about them to create a fourth part because they were not made for the film. All of these songs are popular songs, but with a pop rock twist to them. And unlike the originals, these versions do not have any sort of likability in them whatsoever. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger! No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 There are just too many to choose from, and you can only ask for the film to please stop singing. Even High School Musical, Phineas and Ferb, Glee, and Frozen did a better job than this. And if you think that's bad, wait until you hear about the confusing side plots. You start out with Marianne on an adventure, but the rest is just walking with dinosaurs 3D awful like the Bog King, Sunny, Don, and even Roland. And it all adds to the disaster that it is. This is just as bad as buying a highway that prisoners clean up, and I'm baffled over the fact that this is from the same guy who gave us characters like Jar Jar Banks, and also the Star Wars Holiday Special. Now in terms of the animation, if there's one thing I have to give this film credit for, it's that at least the animation is decent. I can tell that the animators put a lot of effort and details in the animation, like with the plants, the characters, and their designs. This is a crew of animators that I would wish to have to make an animated film look this beautiful. So is there a problem with the animation? Well, there is one, 
Now keep in mind that I did say decent, because even though the animators did the best they could to make the animation look good, it just looks a bit bland. A lot of the natural elements in the film look like they came straight out of Blue Sky's epic to the point where I almost consider it a ripoff. You've got this generic enchanted forest with fairies, goblins, elves, animals, and more that is certainly no different than what can be found in either that or Ferngully the Last Rainforest. They even took the pale flesh tones, the leaf armor, a lot of the woodland animals, and many of the forest's inhabitants. So that's my one criticism with the animation, it's that a lot of it is not really original. But then comes another big elephant in the room, the musical numbers. Again, they are really not enjoyable to watch, and the animation sometimes makes it worse. During most of these songs, you just see the characters flying around. At first, that looks nice, but after that, it can get repetitive. Again, I'm not saying that the animation here is bad. In fact, it looks visually decent. It's just its unoriginality that I have a problem with. And last but not least, the characters. With a film that is as very poorly written as this comes a large cast of one-dimensional characters like what you'd find in these kind of films. A lot of the characters here are either annoying stereotypes or an absolute jerk. Starting with Marianne, she's the broken-hearted one who wants to prove that she can do anything on her own and doesn't need a big strong man. Or does she? I really don't care. Then we've got Dawn, who is really horny for some reason, her best friend Sunny, who has a crush on her, Griselda, Bod King's mother, who is looking for someone to call his wife, but then we have who I consider to be the worst characters of the bunch, the Bog King himself and Roland. They are just terrible antagonists. For Bog, he is the evil ruler of the Dark Forest who has a grudge against love for some obvious reasons. But he's actually not the antagonist. The real bad guy has to be Roland, a misogynistic douchebag who wants to marry Marianne so that he can be king. Oh, I'm sorry, did I mean to spoil the movie? I just don't freaking care. Anyways, as you can tell, this guy is an obvious ripoff of four animated villains. Gaston from Beauty and the Beast, Lord Farquaad from Shrek, Prince Charming from Shrek 2 and Shrek the 3rd, and Hans from Frozen. As for the others, they are just cringeworthy. For several examples, the Sugar Plum Fairy is irritating. Dawn is just flat out stupid. Roland is unbearable. The Fairy King is an obnoxious lunatic. The Bog King's henchmen are just painfully unfunny. And from what you see here, the list goes on. You know, it's kind of weird how in an animated film that's all about love, I cannot think of a single character that I don't hate. In fact, you can only either not care or hate these characters. There's no other way to describe this film other than it's epic, but not so epic, and almost everything is done in the most horrible way possible. Strange Magic is possibly the worst film to ever be brought to us by Lucasfilm. It may have some nice but unoriginal animation, but it won't hide the fact that it gave us more hate than love with some of the worst writing that delivers a very poorly executed story, a cast of annoying and irritating characters, and a random roster of pop rock masters of dated songs that just make the film take a lot longer than we need it to be. For any of you watching this video, please do not watch this film. That is unless you want to discover why love is a very dangerous thing. And that's the one thing I hate the most about this movie. After watching it, I just wanted to wipe out all my memory of love. One more save a pair of idiots loving each other, and I would end up like this. I felt like I'm a single man because I'm too smart to be in love with someone. Ugh.
But now for my rating. I'm gonna go and give the story the near lowest rating. It gets a 1.5 out of 10 because of terrible writing that also gives us songs that make it feel longer. The animation, 6 out of 10 because although it looks good, it steals some elements from other animated fantasy films with nature involved. And the characters... I'm gonna give them a 2 out of 10. Like, I absolutely hate almost every single one of them. They're so annoying and some of them are infuriating jerks. I can't stand them anymore. So overall, I give Strange Magic a 3.5 out of 10. And although I would love to be with a beautiful gorgeous woman in my future, I just hope that I won't do it in any way that my date would get itself the dirt and seal of absolute trash like this train wreck. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go outside and relax. I'm sick and tired of sitting through cringe-worthy garbage that just makes me want to bang my head on the desk. <sighs> See you later, guys. And don't forget to feel the power of Dirksen. Dirksen power.